Hey guys, welcome back to Bomb with you. Guys, they're going to be reacting to 28% of the Bible was written by Paul. Red Letter Bible, Sheikh Khalid Yassin. Guys, if you're new here, please like, share, subscribe to my channel. You can see more amazing content like this. But to be honest, let's just get straight into this. Let's just get straight into this. The five Gospels is a 550 page book containing translations of the Gospels of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. 550 pages of four people who we don't know what their last names were. Matthew who? Mark who? Luke who? And John who? Secondly, 82% of those 550 pages, 82%, they are not the words of Jesus Christ at all. Khalid didn't say that. Christian scholars of 364 denominations, they said that 82% of the 550 pages of the Gospels. They are not the words of Jesus Christ at all. And the way they have determined that and showed that to you and I is that in the New Testament, they have done something called the Red Letter Bible. How many of you have seen the Red Letter Bibles? Be honest. Those are the Bibles where whatever Jesus said himself is in red letters. How many of you have seen that Bible? Yes. And you will find for yourself that only 20% of what is in the New Testament is written in red. That's allegedly what Jesus Christ said. Biblical scholars and theologians alike have learned to distinguish the Jesus of history from the Christ of faith. It has been a painful lesson for both the church and scholarship. The distinction between the two figures is the difference between a historical person who lived in a particular time and place and a figure who has been assigned a mythical role in which he descends from heaven to rescue humankind and, of course, eventually returns back to heaven. We want to continue to review the words of Jesus Christ himself. Jesus Christ said, and this is the life eternal, that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. John 17, 3. that ye may with one mind and one mouth glorify God and Jesus Christ said in John 20 17 to a woman I ascend unto my father and your father and to my God and your God so by Jesus Christ's words He's a prophet of Nazareth. He's a prophet of God. He's a man that eats and drinks. He's a man sent by God. He is the son of man. Man meaning human. He's the son of a woman, Mary, who was pure and untouched, chosen by God to have. Guys, I want to, I want to just ask one simple question. I will try to define Christianity on it, but if you want to understand a passage, I feel you should read in contents, not just speaking out a word. But if you want to do the speaking out a word from like, okay, you want to pick out a chapter, like, like a test, like let's say you want to pick out John 1 verse 17, you just read that, then 
I feel there's going to be a lot of misinterpretation because based on you can't just interpret a full gospel with just the verse. It does not make sense. But like, I feel for you to understand where this gospel is coming from or to understand it, you just need to read it as a whole, not just you taking out. Because if you want to do this, like Jesus clearly said, I am the Father in the planet, isn't he? How do you want to explain that? Like, how do you want to explain that? Or how do you want to explain when Jesus said, before Abraham, I was? Like, how do you want to explain that? Like, I feel you just can't take this verse. Like, you have to understand where it's coming from. That is, that is my input. That is my take on this. But I don't know, what do you think? Just let me know in the comment section. Guys, let's go back. I have a son through phenomenal birth. Now we want to examine a totally different view of Jesus as taught and represented by St. Paul, the father of, modern, of the modern church. In doing so, we will talk about the new covenant, the new testament, and what has inevitably become a new religion built around a new Christ and a new Jesus. Now let's make reference to Paul himself. By his own admission, Paul said that I was on my way traveling on the road to Damascus. That's what Paul said. Now when he was on that road traveling to Damascus, what was he doing? Paul said, I was on a mission to capture or to kill or trap Christians. Because Paul, or at that time his name was Saul of Tarsus. Saul was a bounty hunter. And what was his hunt what was his prey it was christians paul used to trap them bind them hold them arrest them and deliver them to the romans to be jailed and killed for a price now on one of those excursions paul said that he was on the road to damascus and he was riding on a horse along with some other people and he said he heard a voice but the other people didn't hear it he said he saw a light but the others didn't see it and he fell off his horse but the others didn't fall off their horse and Paul said that in a vision he saw Jesus Christ and Christ revealed to him Paul, Paul, why do you persecute the church? Paul, I have selected you to be an apostle to the Gentiles. Now that is the only time that Paul said he saw and talked to Christ. But those that was with him, they didn't see Christ. They didn't see the light and they didn't hear the voice and they didn't fall off their horses. But at best, Paul saw something. We cannot deny that Paul saw something. But isn't it strange that after that one vision, Paul straightaway understood that he was now the 12th apostle of Jesus Christ to replace Judas, a good replacement. Judas, of course, had already betrayed. Jesus Christ had already been lifted. Now there were only 11 disciples, genuine disciples, and Paul said he had been appointed to fill that gap. He now became the 12th apostle by his own appointment. Guys, I find it very funny when people say Paul is an appointed disciple or self-appointed but he clearly said that 
Paul so something. Now let's be serious. Paul so okay. Paul saw something and I he sort of finished the story. Paul turned blind and Jesus directed him to the prophet. Then Paul went to the prophet and the prophet healed him. The prophet was scared at first, and then Paul explained who sent him. And prophet prayed and he was hit. He became his sight. Then Paul started learning from the prophet. The prophet taught him, then he started learning. And he is knowledgeable. Like Paul is okay, Paul had knowledge, like knowledge. So he was able to start preaching the gospel, taking the gospel way like to more places than the apostles were able to take it. And based on his knowledge and I'll say connection because he was he had those kind of connection. He was being persecuted after he changed to after he converted or oh, he took the cross like wanting to preach God and Jesus. He took he was being persecuted and he was later killed. I don't feel Paul will want to preach Jesus and God just for him to be killed. He was killing people for this. So I don't see a reason why he would want to switch the table for him to want to be killed. Like, it does not make sense if you feel he was just doing it based on... Why, why what's the point? Like, what's the point of him being persecuted day in, day out? Like, if he wasn't called by God, I don't feel the reason why he should want to kill himself just to preach God. But... That's my own opinion, and that is what Christians believe in. Because it wouldn't just make sense for someone to just want to kill himself. Like, it doesn't make logical sense. But guys, let's get back into this. And isn't it strange that of the 27 books of the New Testament, that 15 of those books are absolutely written by Paul himself? 15 books and the church fathers are of the opinion that the first five books were also written by Paul or under the influence of Paul why is that because Paul wrote his books between 50 and 60 years after Jesus Christ left the other books the four Gospels and Acts they were written between 90 and 110 years after. Therefore, whoever wrote Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, and Acts, they were influenced by Paul who wrote first. Now, most Christians don't know that. Now, if you got the majority of the books written by Paul who never saw Jesus physically, in one vision, and you got another five books of four gospel writers who also never saw Jesus, never ate with Jesus, never talked to Jesus, never sat with Jesus, never heard directly from Jesus. Then you got at least 20 books of human beings who had no direct connection with Jesus Christ. And mind you, all of these books were written without the authorization, without the assistance, without the witnessing, without the documentation, without the collaboration of the other 12 apostles who were living. Where were they living? In Antioch or Jerusalem or Galilee? One would ask, why didn't those 11 write? And why were they passed up? And why were they not collaborated with? Guys, I believe Matthew, Mark, Luke, John were disciples of Jesus. So they wrote their books. And okay, let's let's scrap it. Let's go for John. John wrote, I believe John wrote Revelation, and he wrote Revelation. So. If you want to read Revelation, Revelation is a Revelation is a book that's supposed to happen in the last days. That's why it's going to be the last book. That's why it is the last book in the Bible. And 
if you read Revelation and you read Revelation and you check, you check, like Revelation, there are a lot of prophecies in the book, and we believe, not we believe, the prophecies are coming to pass. Like, you read Revelation, you see the life, you see things that are really coming to pass. Like, you see oceans getting dry, like, you see. You see rivers getting dry and it's coming to pass. So I don't know how to put it. I don't know how to put it. But Matthew Mark took a job where disciples. But I get his point. Like I get his point totally when he said they are being influenced by Paul and the apostles or the theologians actually some theologians believe that influenced by Paul. This is something I don't know. So I won't say anything on it because I don't know. I'm not going to give you false information about something I'm not aware of. So guys, do make sure to like, share, leave your comment in the comment section. I want to read your thoughts. So I'll see you next time guys. Please.